The effects of climate change in Kenya are as diverse as the regions are. There is no single right response or strategy towards responding to the effects of climate change. Each region is facing different challenges from water scarcity, food shortage and pollution, among other things. Therefore, the strategies need to be unique to each region. With this understanding, many Kenyan innovators have come up with tailor-made strategies to respond to climate change challenges faced at the county level. Meet 29-year-old Samuel Rigu. Samuel is from Mwea in Kirinyaga County. Safi Organics uh, was started back in 2015. But before that, uh, I had tried to deal with waste or crop waste in different perspectives. In 2013, I started a company that was looking to clean energy, convert waste to clean energy. And fortunately, rice husk for that matter didn't work very well because of the ash content. And so we had to forsake that. And then we started a mosquito coil company that really we sold several millions of mosquito coils, but they couldn't compete with whatever is in the market with the conventional uh, mosquito coils. And at that point is when he asked us, oh, what if we take this back to the farm? And we came up with technology whereby we can convert this waste into a fertilizer. Samuel was born and raised in rural Mwea. As a young boy, his father envisioned Samuel would grow up to become an engineer, a dream that did not hold water in Samuel's heart. He had already seen something that had piqued his interest and passion. Based on the fact that I've been brought up in the rural areas, that's where I grew up, I experienced firsthand the challenges of the farmers, knowing very well that the yields were declining year after year, and I was determined including during my school days, to bring a change to this. Because I know millions of children rely on agriculture. And the common story of go to school, work hard, and don't come back to the farm. And yet we are relying on food we have to eat. So how comes if we all left the farm? At the end of the day, when uh, I left home and went to, for my high school uh, in Kembu, uh, I decided, I personally decided to take agriculture because I wanted to pursue something that is related to it and I wanted to see if we can find solution to it. And including the university, I still went for agriculture despite the fact that my dad wanted me to be an engineer. So, and we had a lot of fights then. Uh, telling me, agriculture, what will you do with this cause, you'll not get a job, and that kind of a thing. And that's the fear of every parent. But I told him, Dad, we can make a difference in this. But he couldn't see it, he couldn't believe it. And up to date, but now today he's very happy that I'm doing something for the farm, including the fertilizer we use at our own home. It's Safi Organic, so he's very happy. Yeah, and he's one of my biggest supporters today. Every single day, 15 tons of rice husks are produced in Mwea, Kirinyaga County. These husks are either burnt or dumped, which adversely affects the environment. The question as to what to do with this waste was one that kept Samuel tossing and turning. When the answer finally came, fears of how it would be accepted in the market plagued Samuel's mind. Originally, back in 2014, when the idea of mosquito coil couldn't take off and the thought of if we take it back to the farm what would really happen we were not sure and we didn't have an idea how the farmers will receive it so I had this farmer Mr. Dan who then I told him uh, Mr. Dan can you use our fertilizer or use our product if it works in your farm then pay me if it doesn't work forget about it so it was just a risk that I was taking. And when he used the fertilizer then, or the, uh, then it was not a fertilizer, but a soil amender. When he used the soil amender then, he doubled his yields and apparently called me for a goat eating. Hey, come on. And I was like, oh, yeah, we have an idea here. So at that point is when now we started asking ourselves, does the farmer have to go to the shop, buy fertilizer, and still come and buy an amender from us? 
and we said no we can make a fertilizer from this and so we invested uh, we invested a lot in research and development to develop a formula that could be combined with uh, the amenda to make a complete fertilizer that works both as an amenda and as a fertilizer in itself so there was a breakthrough that happened in 2016 and we had our first product which was the planting uh, fertilizer and it was successful and the farmers were like oh this is working in our rice field it's working in our maize field and they're like yeah let's keep this growing charcoal production in many parts of the world including kenya is often stated to have devastating ecological and environmental effects the most commonly cited impact is deforestation that is clearance of wood or woodland in addition it is researched to contribute to the greenhouse gas emissions totaling to 71.2 million for carbon dioxide and 1.3 million for methane but what if charcoal did not need to be as a result of deforestation Bircha is, I would say, in layman's language, is charcoal from crop waste. That's, that's the way I would say it in a layman's language. But it is usually the same process of preparing charcoal, uh, that is using limited oxygen. You pass the crop residues through limited oxygen, or what we call pyrolysis, and the resulting substrate is what we call biochar. So, Simply, it is charcoal from crop waste. Uh, that one, everyone will understand. Making biochar is a labor-intensive process. It involves having the raw material in large quantities, which Samuel always has. So our process is quite simple. One, we engage farmers or we work with farmers to supply us with the raw materials, uh, which in our case here is rice husks. So once the farmer brings in the rice husk, we have a kiln whereby we pass, uh, we subject this uh, rice husk to limited oxygen and high temperatures of at least 300 degrees on the minimum. And after within two hours, we have a complete uh, substrate, which we call the biochar. After the material has been delivered, it is now time to make the biochar. First, Samuel Steam has to load lots of material such as wood shavings into the kiln and bury the kiln with the rice husks outside. Once the rice husks have turned from yellow to char black, it is now ready for collection. John, Samuel's staff member, picks up the char and takes it to this greenhouse structure. John and his colleagues set up everything for the grinding process. Once this is done, it is now time to grind the blackened rice husks, known as char finer. We grind the biochar. Once we grind the biochar, we add our special recipe, our, our special nutrient mix, which makes it a complete fertilizer. So then we pack it in 50 kg bags, and it's ready for the market, for the farmers to increase their yields. Simple process, but has a guarantee that the end product is marvelous and works wonders in the farms. Quality control is crucial when it comes to fertilizers. Samuel has ensured he is KEBS certified and that if an organic farmer wishes to use his products, they can meet the strict organic export standards that have been set in place. Number one is ensuring that we achieve at least 95% of carbonization or pyrolysis. So that is the minimum that we allow for, so 95%. And then the second thing is the temperature in which we are carbonizing. By varying the temperatures depending on the soil, we can vary the, uh, the pH of the final product. So at the end of the day, uh, we have the range of the temperature which we must use and which we must work within. Uh, once all those are in place, 
we have to ensure during the packaging that the amount of the formula that you are adding and the weight of the biochar that we are mixing, they are in the right or they are in the supposed uh, amounts. Because at the end of the day, what determines the fertilizer is the mixing or the branding. So that one we have to ensure that we have the right amount and it is up to standard. So once that is done, we ensure that it is 50 kg. And we also have to ensure that the moisture content has to be less than 20%, which is below what the government has allowed, actually. So at the end of the day, we guarantee our client that you're getting a product that will work. And because we have the nutrient values on our bags,